When should you sell a stock? Let's talk through all the cases when we think it's okay to cut ways with the stock. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Brian, we have talked a lot on our channel about the way you should buy a stock, the way that you should vet a stock, but we haven't yet touched upon when you should sell a stock. It's a really important topic, and it's one that doesn't get much attention, and usually it's where we make our biggest mistakes. It is very easy. In fact, I would say that I'm much better at buying stocks than I am at selling stocks, and I have made a ton of mistakes historically. So let's run through some of those mistakes and some of the lessons that we've learned about selling along the way. So first off, I have developed an aversion to, to selling. I've been a, a biased against selling. And that's because when I've audited my own results, all of the worst investing decisions I've ever made all have the word sell in them. Here is a quick look at some of the stocks that I sold way too early. I sold American Tower at 60. It's currently 283. I sold Dexcom at $7. Current price, 500. I sold Microsoft before it 10 bagged. I sold Paychex before it four bagged. I sold Insulet before it 15 bagged. And I've sold Waste Management before it almost four bagged. So I have a ton of times when I have personally been in a rush to sell and the actual right decision I should have made would be to buy more. So I believe that the bigger mistake is not necessarily in holding a loser too long. The bigger mistake you can make is to sell a big winner early. And it's very natural to want to sell a stock early, especially if it's been underperforming for a long period of time. We're always looking at prices or a lot of investors naturally look at price. And if a stock is going down or if it's losing to the market, it's natural to say, this thing is terrible. I got to get something else. But as investors, we have to train ourselves to zoom out. And as an investor, I just always try and remind myself that the biggest stock market rewards are exclusively reserved for the investors that can be the most patient. So again, my own history has taught me that I need to have an aversion to selling. And I agree with all those things that you're saying, Brian. I would say patience is sometimes it's the only advantage that we can have and it's enough. If you can be patient, it's enough to have life-changing returns from the stock market. And like you, my biggest mistakes are selling early as well. I sold Netflix when it was around seven to $5 per share. And today it's so many more bags than that. Um, it is a huge mistake to sell a winner early. And it's why I too, am, I have a natural now aversion to selling. But that doesn't mean we don't think you should ever sell. So we want to we want to talk about four broad times when we think selling makes sense. When your thesis has changed, for emotional reasons, for tax reasons, and to realign your priorities. We're about to go into each of these in detail. So let's talk about number one, which I think is probably the most important, and that is when your thesis changes. What does that mean to you, Brian? Basically, it's when your thesis is just flat out wrong. One example from my life is I invested in GoPro because I believed that they were going to become content creators, that people who had GoPro cameras were going to create content and it. There would be kind of this universe of really cool content that that just didn't happen. It didn't materialize. So because I wrote down that that was a reason, I knew that that was my thesis. It didn't happen. I was able to part ways with those shares. I once sold shares of a Grubhub because I believe that Grubhub was going to have this natural monopoly where the, the food delivery company that had the most users was going to have an unbeatable competitive advantage. But Uber Eats and Postmates had different opinions about that. So my thesis for owning that stock was just proven to be fat out wrong. If you buy a company for reason ABC and reasons ABC are not true, you're wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying I am wrong and selling it. Number two to me is accounting irregularities. This is when a company comes out and says, we have to restate our financial statements. If I can't trust a company's financial statements, you're dead to me forever. Why would I bother with that company? So if a company that I own came out and said, our financial statements are wrong, I would sell and move on. Another is that there can be deterioration of the culture of the company. Both Brian and I, in the frameworks that we use, consider culture. So if a company has stellar culture and all of a sudden it starts to deteriorate, that could change our thesis. One of the ways that you can monitor this, other than looking at glass door reviews or anecdotal evidence, is if there's huge turnover in the leadership at a company, that's definitely something to consider uh, when your thesis might be changing. 
Number four, when there's a mega acquisition that I don't like, what does that mean? If a $10 billion company bought another $10 billion company and they were roughly comparable size and I didn't like the acquisition, that could be thesis changing for me. If that was the case, I wouldn't mind selling. Now, the relative size of the two companies is important. If a $100 billion company buys a $1 billion company, it doesn't matter if I think it's a waste of a billion dollars. That is not going to be a thesis changing. So the two companies have to be fairly comparable size for this to matter to me. It can also be the case that your company gets acquired. If that happens, then of course it makes sense to sell your shares because they'll probably be cashed out at some point anyway. You could look in to see if you are converting to shares of the company that's acquiring it. You might be interested in it, but your thesis has clearly changed if the entity doesn't even exist any longer. Yeah. Or finally, if there is no second act, AKA there's no optionality. If you buy a company because it's gonna take on the, a certain market and the company is successful in capturing that market, but it doesn't have another market to hop into, you'll notice that its growth rate is going to slow dramatically. In that case, if I don't see a compelling second act for a company, the no, no optionality kicking in, I have no problem saying, I was right, thesis complete, there's no second act, I'm moving on. Next, we've got emotional reasons. And we always talk about kind of, we say check your emotions at the door, but we can't deny that we are an emotional people. And considering that is really important, getting to know yourself as an investor, because it'll help you make better decisions. So what are the reasons? Well, one, you might just be losing sleep over your investments. That can take a couple different forms, like maybe the risks that your company face are getting higher and higher, or maybe there's an extreme valuation. The bottom line is if you're missing out on your life in the real world because of your investments, then you are a servant to your investments. It should be the other way around where your investments are there to serve you. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, how about if you're just losing interest in the business? If you bought a company a few years ago because you were really excited, but it becomes pain to keep up with that company and you're just not interested in following it anymore, I don't see any reason why you can't sell that company and buy something that you are interested in following. And finally, you might need to rebalance it. And the part of this is that one stock might become too much of your portfolio. This has happened with me before where Amazon became between 20 and 25% of my holdings. I wasn't comfortable with that. Some people are. For me, I decided to sell some of it to bring that allocation down. Yeah. All right, let's move on to tax reasons. In general, we'd think that taxes should be one of the last things that you think about, but there sometimes can be a reason to sell because of tax purposes. And of course, we're talking just about the United States, mostly with these. Uh, I don't know the, the tax laws in each indiv individual jurisdiction out there. But in the United States, one tax that you use is to do something called tax loss harvesting. If you are down on an investment and you don't believe in that company much longer, sometimes it can make sense to sell it because you get to capture an immediate tax tax benefit on doing so. Another reason might be re-upping your cost basis. Now, this only applies to people in certain lower income tax brackets, but there are some people that don't pay capital gains taxes. If that's the case, you can sell your stocks and buy them back at a later date. And when you do, you can have a higher cost basis so that in the future, if you are in a higher tax bracket, you will owe less money on it. This is a little bit more complicated and wonky. So we really suggest that you talk with your tax professional before you make any decisions with regarding taxes and stock sales. Yeah, but for the most part, there are sometimes reasons to sell that have to do with tax purposes. All right, finally, it would just be because your priorities are misaligned. Brian, what does that mean? Well, one could just be that your money is better off somewhere else. Say I'm invested in company A because I was really excited about it. But as I do more research, I become a little bit less excited about it, but really excited about company B. And I don't have any cash laying around to invest in it. Then it might make sense to sell some of company A to buy company B because I think that's a, a stock that has more potential. All right. How about if you need that money in the next three to five years? 
We think that investing in the stock market is a great place to keep long-term capital, but it's not a great place to keep capital that you're going to know that you're going to need to spend within at least three three years. You could even make the argument that should any money that you need in the next five years should not be in the market. You're simply taking on too much market risk. For example, let's pretend it's 2007 and you know that your kid is going to college in three years. Well, if you had to invest through that bear market that was right around the corner, you know that you're going to need that capital. So you do not want that in the stock market. That can make it a good time to sell. And lastly, as you move closer to retirement, a lot of investors, not all, will change the style of their investments. You might move from high growth stocks that can be very volatile to dividend paying stocks that tend to be far less volatile because that more matches what your needs are going to be in retirement. If that's the case, you're aligning your portfolio with your life priorities. All right. Important caveat here is to say that if you want to sell something, you don't necessarily have to go all in or all out at the same time. It's a big mistake to think only in binary black and white thinking. There's nothing wrong with selling in increments. We, I, I myself like to scale into positions over a period of time and scale out of positions over a period of time. So there's no need to think I need to sell and I need to sell everything right now. Your biggest friend during something like this is going to be an investing journal because nothing will help you force you to put your thoughts and ideas down on paper and act as something that you can go back and revisit over time like an investing journal. If you write down your reasons for buying a stock beforehand and you write down some of the things that could happen that would cause you to sell a stock, it will make that decision so much easier in the future when life happens. And, and over time, you will get to know yourself better and make better de investing decisions. I've been keeping an investing journal for years and all the biggest mistakes that I've learned over time were caught by watching my investing journal. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Just write down your thoughts before you do something. If you're going to buy a stock, write down why. If you're going to sell a stock, write down why. It gives you a record that you can go back and revisit some of your decision makings to ensure that you don't make those same mistakes again, as I have so many times when it comes to selling a stock. And it's really, you find patterns about yourself that you wouldn't have otherwise known. And I will just say, it's a great tool for investing. It's also a really great tool for life in general. Well, we hope that that list was helpful for you to think through when you should sell a stock. Again, I have a strong bias towards holding now instead of selling. But that's because I've made so many mistakes in the past. And we think in general, investors sell too much. But we do recognize there are reasons to sell. And let us know in the comment section, did we miss any obvious reasons why you should sell a stock? Because we're always open to learning. I'm always interested in hearing people's feedback because I want to get better as an investor. Brian, thanks for being here. Thanks, Brian.